This timer is called stored on delay because after the timer times out, the coil's value is stored and must be reset for the timer to be used again. Network 1 has the stored on delay timer, Network 2 has the stored on delay timer coil, and Network 3 has a reset for the stored on delay timer coil. The stored on delay timer starts on the leading edge of a 0 to 1 transition. The input can be momentary and does not have to remain true for the timer to time to zero. The coil is zero or false while the timer is timing down. The coil is one or true when the timer has timed out. This is the only S7 timer that must have a reset if it is to be used more than once. The time format for all S7 timers is S5T pound sign followed by the hours, minutes, seconds and milliseconds up to a maximum time of 2 hours, 46 minutes, and 30 seconds. The timer's name, T106, also acts as a coil and can be evaluated as a contact. You may add an external coil like M250.4 and evaluate that bit instead of the T bit if you prefer. Let's monitor the block. Make sure that network 1 is highlighted. We will energize input 1.6 with a momentary push of the button and start the timer. The T106 bit in network 3 follows the timer. Notice that a transition of the input has no effect on the timer. Let's reset the timer with input 1.5. If a stored on delay timer coil is used, such as timer 107 in network 2, then you must also have a reset bit to reset the timer, such as the one in network 3. Let's start timer T107 with a momentary on I1.7. And reset the timer with input 1.4. To review, the stored on delay timer starts on the leading edge of a 0 to 1 transition. The input can be momentary and does not have to remain true for the timer to time to 0. The coil is 0 or false while the timer is timing down, and the coil is 1 or true when the timer has timed out. This S7 timer must have a reset if it's to be used more than once. And that concludes this video.